I've had a lot of comments on these 521 relays, you know, like uh, this sort of thing and the uh, PTC uh, start kit. Uh, and I've, I've, there's a few things I'm a little bit concerned about. One thing from some of the comments, I've heard a lot of these guys saying they're having many, many failures of these potential relays. Uh, there's another problem in your system if those relays are failing. They seldom fail. In 35 years, I probably did not replace more than maybe 8 or 10 of those max. They do not fail often. They, uh, there may be some problems with uh, newer capacitors. Here's an old one here, really old. My thought is you probably have a uh, short cycling issue or something like that if these things are failing commonly. It is so common for them to just go forever and never fail. It's it's very unusual failure. Now I'm going to contrast that a little bit to uh, uh, these things here. Uh, this is of course a run cap. Uh, there's been a lot of failures of run caps. Here's one made in Pakistan. I probably shouldn't beat up Pakistan. Here's one made in Hui um, Tongfeng, obviously China. Um, this one's made in Mexico. These are all uh, newer caps. And, you know, the, the Chinese ones seem to be the worst. At least they have been. Maybe they're better. I don't know. But this is what I use. <laughs> uh, this thing's made in the States. Uh, it's a bunch more expensive, but it does work. And I've never had one fail. Could happen anytime. Uh, here's another cap uh, 40 microfarads and 5 microfarads dual cap. Probably made in the late 70s or early 80s. Doesn't have any PCBs in it. PCBs are kind of a big deal on these caps. When I first got in the industry in 1977, they were just getting rid of PCBs. And we're trying to figure out what they were going to use. But we did not have failures in these, these run caps. We never had any failures in these. Caps were something that we just really didn't worry about. Now certainly... A start cap, if I got a start cap and it's got a bunch of crap blown out of this hole in the in the center of it, it's probably not start cap, it's probably short cycling. Because this thing is getting turned on all the time, and if it's getting turned on all the time, it's not made to be in the circuit. So, uh, like I said, I'm not real thrilled with these. They're okay, they do probably a better job than this. But, uh, you know, this is for a failing compressor. This should only be for a failing compressor, not for making it start better. I had one guy tell me that it lowered his electric bill by putting one of these on. I'll just suffice it to say that starting amps does not trigger a demand meter on a demand meter system. So... Uh, I won't go any farther than that at this time. I would not prefer to use this if I had a hard start, that if I had a system that needed a hard start kit but wasn't worn out. I would rather want something like this. The reason I want this is because this is a factory one. The factory one is designed to work with that system, with that compressor, um, most of these things, uh, this one's three and a half to five tons, this thing's two to five tons, I mean, you know, come on, man. <laughs> it's just kind of a whole fixed thing. Um, if you need a start kit, and, and 
let me go over the experience a little bit. If I had a system that needed a hard start because it had an on bleed TXV, this would be the kit that comes from the factory. This will work. You can put that on there and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I've tried these things a number of times and uh, they are not as effective. Uh, this one is also not as effective. It does work. But I'm not sure this thing's going to drop this thing out at 75% motor speed. Because that's what it's supposed to do. If it drops it out at an earlier um, RPM or a later RPM, it's not going to be working as effectively as it should. So, uh, you're not going to save energy by putting a start kit on. Uh, you're not going to save your compressor. I know a lot of guys say, well, yeah, it doesn't draw power as long. Well, you know, you're going to have to draw power on that start winding for quite a while to overheat it. It, it does take a while. It's not going to be the quarter second or something that these things take to start. So, uh, if you're having failures, you know, going back to what we started here, if you're having failures of start kits, or failures of, uh, well, if you're, if you're having start kit failures, uh, you may have uh, capacitor problems. Because a lot of these newer capacitors have not been real good. Um, I can say inside they look pretty much the same because I've taken both of them apart, but uh, that doesn't mean they really are. So, quality of the components may not be as good. Anyway, just a little bit of a ramble on uh, on these start kits again. Remember, if you're if you're a smart guy and replace run caps, put that thing in. These things come out about yeah, about 15 years ago, I think. In fact, when I was teaching school, they uh, they sent me gobs of these things. I had probably 15 or 20 of them there even sent me a little capacitor tester with them and they, when they were just trying to push them. And uh, they've been a good product. They are high-end. Anyway, uh, I got nothing for saying that. <laughs> That's it on this one.